And so the current bull run triggered by the V3 launch for Aave is pretty impressive, right? But we really have to take care of the following. Really make sure that Hi, in this video, we're going to discuss Aave or more specifically the Aave token. Does it make sense to buy into this rally now? Is this going to rise further? What are the current drivers and how sustainable are those drivers going forward? Now, what we're going to discuss is not just technical analysis, right? We're not just looking at price action. We're actually going to look at the ecosystem. We are going to look at what's actually going on with Aave. What's the total value locked? What is this V3 launch all about? What kind of impact does it have on the token. But first things first, let's start with the fundamentals, right? Aave is currently at $151, going up 10%, one of the top gainers in terms of performance in the last seven days. We are looking at market rank 51 with a market cap of a bit over 2 billion. Now the fully diluted market cap is 2.4 billion, meaning 85% of the circulating supply has already been issued. Now, first of all, what is Aave actually? Aave is a borrowing and lending platform. So what you can do on Aave is you can deposit various cryptocurrencies and you can get an APY on this, right? You can get a return on these cryptocurrencies by providing, for example, your Chainlink tokens or by providing, say, your stablecoin. You can get 1.5%. On the other hand, you can also borrow cryptocurrencies. And why might you want to do this? You might want to do this, for example, to bet on falling prices. So let's say you don't believe in Chainlink going up over the long term. Let's say you say Chainlink will underperform, which by the way, in case you're wondering, it did. Here, this is Chainlink versus Ethereum. So let's say you want to bet on this further going down. What you could do is you could go to Aave, deposit, for example, wrapped Ethereum, then borrow Chainlink against this. So you'd pay 6.45% per annum. Having borrowed that chain link, then you can sell the chain link and you can sell it against whatever you are bullish on. So let's say you are bullish on Ethereum, you're bearish on chain link, you would swap that chain link versus Ethereum. And then you're hoping that this will continue to decline, meaning in a future point in time, you could again swap back your Ethereum for Chainlink. That's then hopefully lower in price, meaning that you can pay back your Chainlink denominated loan easier, right? Because when Ethereum appreciates, you wouldn't have to convert all of your Ethereum into Chainlink in the future in order to pay back that loan. So all the Ethereum you have left after that transaction is then pure profit. So that's one way you could use Aave. There's a lot of other ways. There's ways to leverage trade. There's ways to Delta neutral DeFi farm. There's all kinds of fancy strategies. Aave is used in many ways. Now on the website, DeFi Llama, we can actually look at what kind of borrowing and lending platforms are currently the most popular based on their total value locked. So that's here the TVL number. At the very first place, there is Anchor. So that's the Terra Luna ecosystem. If you deposit your UST stablecoin, you can get almost 20% per annum on a stablecoin. That's why there's so much money in Anchor. The second place is already Aave. And it's not very far away from this, right? Anchor has 13 billion, Aave has 12 billion. Both of them are pretty much the juggernauts in DeFi. If you're betting or if you're using any kind of DeFi platform, those are the platforms that seem to be most secure, at least if you believe in security due to size, due to large numbers. Now, this is how Aave's total value locked has developed. So actually, there was a peak in October of 2021 of almost 20 billion. And since then, we have declined. Now, here we've got the same for Anchor. Anchor does look differently, right? Anchor gets continued adoption. So over the long term, at least right now, the momentum is not yet on Aave, or at least not again on Aave. Now, what is this recent rally here about, right? Where we went up by 33% in 68 hours. What is this all about? This is caused by a new launch by Aave version 3. So what I've shown you here before is Aave version 2, the regular Aave, which you can use on the Avalanche blockchain, on the Polygon blockchain, 
and of course on Ethereum. And you get different rates, you get different market sizes for each of those blockchains. These Avalanche versions are pretty much independent from one another. Now, when you look at the current URL, this is now under classic.av.com version two. So this is now the classic platform. If you actually go to ave.com and you launch the app, what you will be redirected to is app.ave.com, which is version three. Now what's version three? It's obviously an improvement to version two. What does it do? Basically two things. The first thing, I haven't tried this yet, right? But the first thing is you get automatic bridging of deposited Aave tokens. So what you now can do apparently with version three is you can deposit on one blockchain, say Ethereum, then you can borrow against that collateral on another blockchain, say Polygon, and then repay this again on another blockchain, Avalanche. So there is token bridging happening under the hood, automatic communication between the blockchains. You don't have any more isolated pools of capital based on the blockchain, which is the case for version two. And so that's pretty neat actually, because very often when you play around with different kinds of opportunities, say you want to deposit money in a liquidity pool, that's especially profitable, say on Avalanche and not so profitable on Phantom. And you want to move your money over from Phantom to Avalanche, you have to do bridging. You have to maybe go to any swap or multi-swap it's now called. And you have to do this bridging process. It takes quite some time sometimes if there's not enough liquidity available. So it can be quite a headache automating all of this and having all of this happening under the hood is a real improvement. It's really an improvement in usability. Now, what's also very interesting is where actually version three has launched. So we can see here the version two markets, Avalanche initially launched on Ethereum and on Polygon and on Avalanche. But nowadays using Ethereum for DeFi isn't great at all because the gas fees, they are simply way, way too high. Nowadays, Ethereum, I think is mainly used just for very simple swaps. If you go to Uniswap or for NFTs, because there is no real good competition for NFTs on any other blockchain. So that's what Ethereum nowadays mainly is used. If you're just looking at APYs of 3% or 4%, something like this, or if you want to do arbitrage across different liquidity pools or borrowing and lending platforms, Ethereum's gas fees will pretty much destroy most of the gains. So it's interesting that V3 didn't even initially launched on Ethereum. I think that's a pretty bold step. I think it's the very first time I see a very large platform actually going around Ethereum. This might also tell you something about Ethereum's future, right? If Ethereum can't reduce their gas fees in the future enough, then this might simply also happen with other blockchains. What especially caught my eye was the launch here on Phantom, because Phantom is very much known for its DeFi ecosystem. If you look at Phantom, we've got Geist and Scream as the main borrowing and lending platforms. They do have a bit of a total value locked decline because currently the Phantom ecosystem is suffering, but that's because of a very different topic. That's Andre Cronier leaving. If you're interested in that kind of topic, feel free to search my YouTube channel. But that's basically where most of the borrowing and lending is happening on Geist and on Scream. Iron Bank also has pretty nice rates, but it is quite small now. And so Geist was simply an Aave fork, right? An Aave version two fork. It did get a lot of adoption in the beginning because of a lot of subsidies. Since then, the rates aren't as great. But here, when you look at this, this looks very, very similar to Aave, right? It's simply just a copy of Aave. So I found this very, very interesting that Aave V3 is now launching on Phantom, basically directly competing now with Geist and Scream. And given that we can potentially use this automatic bridging, maybe Aave can also control Phantom's DeFi system, right? It can probably dominate this potentially. Now, here's the thing we have to look out for. And unfortunately, I couldn't get enough data on this. But the thing to really consider, as for example, we have seen here on Geist is sometimes these launches 
they try to get a lot of publicity. They try to get adoption by incentivizing people, right? This is what happened to Geist. And even if you go to Geist today, you see that a lot of these borrowing and lending rates, they are subsidized. In theory, you get 5.11% per annum for depositing fandom. But on top of that, you also get 2% per annum paid out in Geist tokens. Or here, the other way around, which is very, very interesting, you pay 21.45%, but you even even get a higher APR paid out in guys tokens. So here you even get paid for borrowing phantom tokens. That's interesting, right? You could deposit a stablecoin UST, you could borrow phantom against this. And if you wanted to, you could cycle this a few times or alternatively, you could deposit this on something like Taro TO, right? Taro Finance. Over here, you get on single-sided liquidity pools around 20% per annum depositing phantom. So there's a lot of different ways to play this market. And the reason why I talk about this this incentive here on Geist is because the question really is how much does Aave potentially dilute the value of the token by incentivizing deposits. So I haven't found details on this. I haven't found the recent issuance of Aave tokens. The only thing I could find which is positive is that the circulating supply is already at 85%, which would indicate that you don't get inflated into oblivion, which very often is the case with these application-driven tokens. That's probably the reason why when we look at Aave over the very long term, the US dollar price doesn't actually look bad, right? The US dollar price looks quite nice. We have still made 180% since inception. But the problem is when you look at this relative to, for example, Ethereum, then this looks very, very different, right? A constant underperformance. So if you bought something way less risky than Aave, right? Ethereum is the second largest cryptocurrency. If you took on more risk by owning Aave, you would have underperformed Ethereum. And the question is, will this continue or will this actually actually stabilize given that we are now at 85% circulating supply. Because if it can stabilize the launch of V3, the usability improvement of cross blockchain borrowing and lending, I think is quite neat. Now, in the end, I think the only thing you can do is actually you can only bet on rising prices over here. Because when you go to Aave directly, maybe there are other borrowing and lending platforms where you can. But when you go to Aave directly, you can't actually borrow against Aave. You can supply and borrow all kinds of other tokens, but you can't borrow Aave, right? One idea would be if you wanted to bet on falling prices of the Aave token, one idea would be to borrow this to then directly sell this against whatever you're bullish on, be this stable coins or maybe Bitcoin, and then hope that Bitcoin appreciates versus Aave and then pay back that loan in Aave at a later point in time. But you can't borrow Aave, so you can't really bet on this further declining, at least using Aave directly. So the only bet you can do is buying the token, and then you have to be careful not to buy too much into hype. Now, what I like to look at long term is the trading volume, because very often what we see is when trading volume is very, very high, for example, here, let's zoom directly into this. On the 4th of February 2021, trading volume was really, really high. This also marked pretty much a high point in price, right? Afterwards, the trading volume declined and with it, the price as well. And we see this several times, right? When we look also here at the 12th of May 2021, again, two days of high trading volume. The price was also relatively high. Then once trading volume declined, the price also fell. So you always want to look out for this. Right now, we are not at these crazy insane levels, right? We've seen way larger prices before, way larger trading volumes before. But simply watch out for this, right? If you are considering to get onto this recent rally, watch the trading volume. See that it stays relatively low because once it's high, right? Once it's around 2.8 billion over here, then you might be facing potentially some downside further down the road. Currently, we are approximately at one fifth of that, right? A bit over 500 million trading volume per day. So make sure you're aware of the dangers. You don't want to buy into too much hype. Now, another thing I find very interesting is the idea of using isolated markets or using 
coins as collateral that are relatively unorthodox. So the problem always with borrowing and lending platforms, and that's hopefully something that's going to be fixed now. The problem is always the selection of coins here. Look at Phantom, Phantom based Avalanche. We've got a few stable coins, right? DAI, USDC, Tether. But then what do we really have that's volatile that we could potentially bet on if you wanted to bet on falling prices? We could bet on a falling Bitcoin price, a falling CRV token, Ethereum, Chainlink, Sushi, and FTM. And that's about it, right? The question is always also how much is there supplied? Right here, for example, for Chainlink, we only have 2.3K US dollars in supply. For Avalanche, that's a bit more. So the problem is always the selection of coins. And what I would like to see, and this seems to be the promise here with V3, is that it becomes significantly easier to onboard new forms of collateral. And that would be great. Imagine you could bet on a falling Dogecoin price, or imagine you could bet on something that you're very bearish on, borrow denominated in whatever coin you don't really like. Let's say that's uh, ICP. I'm pretty bearish on ICP if you're wondering. So an internet computer, let's say you're also bearish on internet computer. I don't intend to make any enemies over here, but I just want to show you why I'm so bearish on this. So this is ICP versus Ethereum long term, right? So I tend to believe that this might continue in the future, right? If you could use Aave to deposit, say, Ethereum or deposit Bitcoin and then borrow denominated in ICP, swap that to Bitcoin and then just wait for this to further decline. This would be really, really great. This is probably the final holy grail of DeFi. If that will become available, I think a lot of new opportunities will open up. Now, would I buy Aave right now, the Aave token? It really depends on your individual risk tolerance, right? I personally currently do slightly different play I'm not yet 100% convinced that the overall crypto landscape is currently bullish. So I first want to see Bitcoin and Ethereum turning around. When that happens, then I personally also feel a bit more comfortable taking on riskier bets. But if you're considering to use Aave simply for DeFi, for earning yield or for betting on falling prices or for doing delta neutral liquidity pool farming, things like that, or even to get leverage, then I think this platform is very, very solid. Now, if you're wondering what delta neutral farming even is and how you can make money on this, there is a dedicated DeFi section here on the bitcoinstrategy.com, the premium membership of the Bitcoin strategy. Over here, we've got detailed videos on how to open a chain link short, for example, how to bridge Bitcoin using the REN bridge to get yield on your BTC, how to do false shorting, all kinds of interesting content. Of course, there's more, right? There's the TA Academy, a lot of interesting technical analysis content, a whole course on this. And of course, there are exclusive chats, for example, the premium news where I share my view on the general cryptocurrency market every single day. So feel free to check that out. The bitcoinstrategy.com is the link that's also in the video description. You can sign up either monthly or you can save two months, get two months for free by paying yearly. If you haven't yet subscribed, feel free to do so. I publish videos here on this YouTube channel every single day. Your like would be appreciated as well because it will help the channel grow. It helps the YouTube algorithm. There's one more video you probably want to watch. This is a comparison of Aave versus Maker. So Maker is a competitor of Aave. A direct comparison of both platforms is in this video. Don't miss that. See you in that video. Bye-bye.